ஆஹ் ஓகே சார் நோ ப்ராப்ளம் சார் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணலாம் சார் சீஃப் கெஸ்ட் சீஃப் கெஸ்ட் சீஃப் கெஸ்ட் அசோக் அசோக் சார் ரெடியா ஹலோ அசோக் சார் ஹலோ ஆ ஓகே ஆ வில் ஸ்டார்ட் வில் ஸ்டார்ட் ஓகே ஓகே குட் ஈவினிங் एवरी वन இட்ஸ் மை பிளேசர் டு வெல்கம் யூ ஆல் ஆன் பிஹாஃப் ஆஃப் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் மெக்கானிக்கல் இன்ஜினியரிங் நியூ பிரின்ஸ் ஸ்ரீ பவானி காலேஜ் ஆஃப் இன்ஜினியரிங் அண்ட் டெக்னாலஜி ஃபார் திஸ் ஒன் டே நேஷனல் வெபினார் ஆன் real time control techniques of automotive emissions now i request mr c venkatesh rajpermal sir of mechanical engineering department to welcome this session and to brief about our college good evening one and all present here today it's not a normal day nationals doctors day that day seeks to thank all doctors and medical professionals for their service against covid-19 pandemic and today i hello am i audible yes sir yeah, audible audible okay it's my immense pleasure to welcome our today's presenter mr ashok kumar for this webinar it's my pleasure to invite our vice chairman chairman thiru k loganathan our vice chairman dr l navin prasad our college principal dr g saravanan our college director a swaminathan sir and our department heads faculty members and participants let me quickly take you through our college profile our college new prince shri bhavani college of engineering and technology established in the year of 2008 is affiliated to anna university and accredited by sac and also iso 9001 2015 certified institution with excellent grade our college provides you the best technical education we have successfully produced 91 percentage placement in core companies like tcs cts vibro ibm infosys tech mahindra during the academic year 2019-20 we provide enormous scholarship schemes for meritorious students by waiving off their tuition fees we provide 100 percent free education for underprivileged and deserving candidates apart from excellent academic track with various vision and mission goals we also concentrate on several value added courses and certificate programs we also stimulate students to take part in sports and cultural activities five of our college students have been selected for tamil nadu volleyball team i sincerely hope that this next webinar will succeed in every aspect i wish everybody a good health thank you all one second i welcome for the session everyone thank you sir thank you very much I take this opportunity to brief about our research person Mr R Ashok Kumar. He is currently working as exhaust system product development engineer in Sharda Motor. Prior to this, he was working with Simpson on engine development. He has completed his graduation in automobile engineering and masters in internal combustion engineering and operations management. Currently, he is working for the development of exhaust system for on-road, off-road and non-road application. to meet the bs4 bs6 trim four stage five cpcb plus regulation with various original equipment manufacturers like mahindra and mahindra hyundai tata ashok leland sonalika escorts etc i welcome you sir so kindly take over the session sir thank you thank you for the brief introduction and thank you for this opportunity and uh, good evening to all um, yeah uh, i'm working in the field of exhaust system for uh, all internal combustion engineering so uh, i take this opportunity to elaborate you on the uh, requirement of an exhaust system in an engine and why it's required and uh, how it is derived and how it is, it is becoming a solution for an automotive uh, sector okay uh, so basically if you see in automotive sector it is run by an uh, power source that is the internal combustion engine engine so uh, the engine is a power source that is delivering the required uh, requirement to an vehicle like whatever it may be in separated speed or 
or other sophisticated things. So when we are using a source for a power, so there is there are some byproducts coming out of an engine. So that may create uh, or that will create harmful uh, to the environment as well as the human being. So basically, uh, government is regulating. They are bringing up the regulation on time uh, to bring the uh, the harshness that is uh, becoming due to the technology. So 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 they are they are. Uh, making a trade off on both a uh, scenario like when technology grows it will not affect the environment as well as the human being so i'm going to brief the uh, how it's the emissions are generated and what are the regulation how the regulation numbers are derived and what are the technologies that are used in an uh, engine to bring the uh, emission numbers to the uh, required so basically, if you see an internal combustion engineering engine, so the power, what is are getting inside is going to be an air plus fuel. And as a byproduct, the burnt gases are coming out. So when you take it in air, air is a composition of oxygen and nitrogen. So whereas the other composition is the, so in case of uh, spark ignited engine, it's going to be a gasoline. And in case of compression ignited engine, it's going to be Commodities. So, based upon the composition of the uh, input, the output is going to be this. So, that that that, uh, that amount of uh, outputs that are coming, like CFO, if you see industry, like CO2, CO, NO2, NOx, PM, SO2, HCM, O2, maybe more other byproducts may come out, but certain products are regulated. So certain products numbers to be maintained by using technology. So these numbers are coming to this uh, input content. Like if you take a diesel fuel, the chemical formula that the uh, ranges of the carbon as well as hydrogen content uh, varies from uh, 6310 to C15 H20 to H20. So this varies. And if you take a gasoline engine, Compared to a diesel, it will be lower. Like, uh, for example, in the gasoline is C8 and H18. So, again, uh, the fuel, the hydrocarbon fuel, whether it's diesel or gasoline, it is uh, coming into the picture along with the air and creating a byproduct. At the meantime, generating this chemical energy into heat energy and heat energy into mechanical energy. So, uh, this, this varies based upon the inputs that we are using. That's that's the point I try to bring. So as as I give an, uh, a small introduction about the engine, like uh, if you see an uh, internal combustion engine, it's two types. It can be normal as a layman language we used to call it as uh, uh, petrol and diesel. The other way, the petrol engine is called as uh, spark ignited engine, and the uh, diesel engine are called as combustion ignition engine. So Basically, it is a uh, volume control and the diesel is a uh, pressure control. So the ignition point at, is brought at a certain point. It is, get, it, it is ignited and the output of the uh, chemical energy uh, is transferred into heat energy during the combustion and it's transferred to a mechanical energy to the uh, cylinder head, piston and the crankshaft, etc. to the uh, drive. So uh, as we see, there are two different fuels and uh, two different type of uh, engine operation, and uh, that brings the required output to the uh, vehicle. But uh, there are n number of variables that uh, contribute to bring the uh, fuel uh, fuel into an power. So, uh, for example, if we see uh, in an internal combustion engine. The uh, temperature, the tem term thermal management, like whatever, and since it's a power source, the power, whatever is getting generated, should not go to an atmosphere. So the appropriate material need to be selected, and appropriate condition need to be maintained all around the system. Even exceeding the system could uh, could 
kill the engine like it's cute if you and you a high thermal expansion which which the engine cannot operate so the thermal management is a major uh, preliminary variable that need to be uh, precisely controlled uh, then the injection the how much amount of fuel you are injecting so that uh, what is the injection speed what is the injection quantity and uh, even the pressure for example if it's an uh common rail direct injection or uh, multi point fuel injection whatever may be what is the pressure maintained so the quantity of fuel is determined uh, as one of the variable then comes to the combustion so uh, you are maintaining a certain temperature you are maintaining a good fuel condition again the uh, combustion chamber uh, the valve opening and all other parameters the combustion need to be a clean combustion like Uh, the complete uh, fuel need to be utilized or complete fuel need to be burned so to extract the uh, full amount of uh, output from the fuel so that is determined by the air fuel ratio that is bringing into the engine so that, that there are certain ratio like um, the air fuel ratio of the uh, diesel as well as petrol need to be of an uh, certain ratio so that the exact output can be brought out after the basic operating condition there are additional parameters like the turbocharging or the exhaust gas recirculation turbocharging is utilizing the exhaust gas for the uh, additional input power for an engine so 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 this this are the variables to which which will brings or which will vary the uh, emissions or the by product productions again uh, exhaust gas recirculation is an particular uh, method to reduce the engine operating temperature down or maintaining the operating temperature so that the uh, trade off between the power as well as the output will be compromised so the same slide what i spoke about last slide is the uh, replication of it like uh, uh the operating condition for example if you take an uh, 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 gasoline engine the air fuel ratio like 14.6 to 1 like what is the quantity of uh, fuel as well as what is the quantity of air you are taking into an engine determines how much uh, no hc and co is generated and what is the power of the engine uh, the the bandwidth of area it need to be operated Uh, need to be maintained in an engine with the appropriate quantity of uh, fuel and air so for example uh, we used to call it as a rich person and then uh, poor person so same term terminology is taken into an engine uh, air fuel mixture like it's in case some case we call it as an rich mixture some case it is a lean mixture so as we as a name implies a rich mixture is the Uh, increase in amount of fuel in the mixture like if you are mixing the air and fuel there is a higher quantity of fuel is there inside the composition of it's called a rich mixture and if the quantity of uh, fuel is comparatively lower uh, than the uh, air then it is called a lean mixture engine so in that case if it is a rich mixture engine that, uh, that mean to say that we are overeating so as a human being we are overeating so whatever we are going to overeat it's going to form as an cholesterol in our human body the same way it is going to be an incomplete combustion which will create a by product like the unburned hydrocarbon or the carbon monoxide co so which are all regulated uh, pollutants so so if anything goes exceed above the limit then uh, the uh, in the the by products is going to be effect on the output then if you see the lean mixture so lean mixture is uh, are certain engines we call it as diesel engines or lean mixture engines where the uh, the the temperature the temperature uh, formed inside the combustion chamber is higher so certain amount of uh, emissions are higher like uh, in general Uh, the nitrogen content in an air is higher so when in an in combustion chamber a higher amount of air is injected since it's a lean compared to fuel air will be higher so when this uh, this stage is uh, happens inside a combustion chamber 
at the higher uh, temperature the nox the n2 sorry n2 in the air will react with the oxygen excess oxygen to form nox which is also an emission uh, limit that what the government has determined so basically even we can say if it is an uh, rich mixture or lean mixture so whatever condition there are the emissions forming like in an uh, in an ideal case we need to meet the limit or the regulation amount but by certain amount of um, calibration in an engine and after a certain limit we need to we are deliberately need to use in technology in the uh, exhaust to meet the regulations so why this uh, as uh, we are using engine we are using hydrocarbon it is um, unburned hydrocarbon is coming in some case it's unburned and now it is coming out so what happens is, so due to this uh, byproducts coming out it is uh, uh, it is it is uh, giving an bad effect to the environment as well as the human being for example the hydrocarbon which can give eye and throat irritation and uh, the carbon monoxide can give an reduce oxygen circulation or smoke formation uh, nitrogen oxide can uh, give the precursor of smog and acid rain and also a possibility of prone to respiratory infection and the particulate matter uh, is, is it's a major uh, contributor for carcinogenic and the respiratory disease so considering all this as the number of automotive vehicles are increasing day by day the government has regulated the emissions coming out to an extent based upon the category and that is that need to be maintained by the oems uh, to uh, to to meet the sales range or uh, to have an effective uh, utilization of their resources so if you see an emission trend so uh, engine is there it's forming some emissions so that emissions are harmful to the environment so and day by day the vehicles and automotive uh, development is going in a rapid way so the regulation numbers are coming down so you see we the indians we are following now the bs4 uh, and uh, in the march we are about to implement the bs6 but due to this covid situation it is getting somewhat delay so if you see we are following the european vessels uh, but at say both are the same uh, numbers but the uh, the name implies is the euro where here it's part of state so if you see from euro 1 to euro 6 there is 82 percentage of emission reduction like the limit i'm speaking only about the limit the limit set by euro 1 and the limit set for emission for uh, euro 6 considerably 82 percentage of reduction is there so that's how the Uh, the emission regulations are becoming stringent to give an uh, give an tough uh, situation to the OEMs and the other product manufacturers. So directly going into the emission regulation nowadays, uh, uh, whoever having a vehicle can speak like I'm having a BS3 vehicle, I'm having a BS4, vehicle, and uh, it's going to be coming with the BS6 vehicle. So 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 what is that? Like, uh, BS6 is an emission regulation. that is having a certain amount of limitation for all the pollutants coming out and what is the implementation date like for example as i said before 2020 is the target date of implementing the bs 2020 march uh, so that is the uh, current emission regulation that is going to be implemented on lower the nation due to the heavier uh, severe air pollution so for that Uh, regulation we need to make design our engine and we need to also test our engine in the engine tester to meet certain number so that numbers we can see in the next slide like the for example the category of passenger car and light commercial vehicle based upon the weight category like uh, the uh, the co uh, dhc nmhc nox and pm even pm particulate matter is also there for uh, even gasoline engine for the bdi application so the numbers the precise numbers are here tabulated so this numbers need to be um, maintained by the engine or the 
uh, OEM to get the uh, type approval or the certification for their uh, engines as well as vehicles uh, to come into uh, commercial or the uh, market. The same we have have the commercial vehicle also. Even in the commercial vehicle, the uh, the limitations are a little bit lower. Like uh, if you compare with a passenger car and then uh, commercial vehicle. So since it's an uh, huge engines with uh, certain constraints, so accordingly the limitations are uh, made. And again, uh, there also we need to meet the BS6 regulation for commercial vehicle where uh, where it is going to be implemented. And if you see in a non-road engine, like uh, for example, the tractors are off-road and the gensets are non-road. Uh, so uh, the general category like construction equipment vehicle, it's a category that is categorized for both the variants like the non-road or off-road. Uh, it is derived by the power rating of an engine, like so whether it's an uh, 37 kilowatt or 130 kilowatt or 56 kilowatt. Based upon the category of uh, power, uh, the uh, the emissions coming out is uh, uh, determined, and it is tested by various test methods like uh, NRSC and NRT, so like non-road stationary cycle or non-road transient cycle. So all together, this emission limits are need to be met in the test bed and then it comes to the field and then comes to the type of role and other things. So speaking about the limits, uh, we have derived certain numbers, let's like HC is this number, CO is this number, and NOx is this number. So when we do this uh, engine test in a test bed, uh, the main thing is we need to operate the engine at all the uh, operating conditions, like for example, uh, whatever, whether it's an uh, highway or it's an uh, it's a normal drive or ideal condition or high speed, low speed, max car condition, max rated condition, all conditions we need to uh, operate the engine. So, so in such a way that the test methods are determined uh, and the weightage factors for each load conditions are uh, determined and the emission numbers are derived. Like. When it is in when it is in the test bed, when the engine is developed and when it is in the test bed, we are simulating the engine to a uh, real uh, operating condition with the real test, and we are deriving the number, and that numbers are approved and proceed. So that is a steady state cycle, and uh, this is a transient cycle. So this transient cycle is uh, a completely uh, a real severe thing like uh, for example in a steady state you will operate the engine it will, it will allow it to warm up then you will operate at all the points operating points and you'll measure the gas but in this case you the emission start measuring when you start sinking like when that's a cold start when if normally if we take our vehicle in the early morning uh, higher emissions will be coming out that hydrocarbon emission due to the cold start condition. Since the automobile or the engine components are uh, are, are, are not at the uh, required temperature, uh, the excess amount of fuel is get wasted during the cold start condition. So the same condition is simulated in the transient cycle, uh, and all the uh, other variables like it's an uh, it's an software uh, software uh, operated like. Uh, uh, normalized load will be applied and that that will be monitored by the uh, system and the emission will be measured. So uh, now I, I told about an engine and the emissions coming out and how these emissions are uh, regulated and what is the number of each uh, emission and then the how this emission numbers are derived during the development of an engine and now comes the technology so when there are engines when engines are developed the engine manufacturer do certain amount of calibration work like he cannot compromise uh, after a certain extent his power or torque so he will stand in a standpoint that this is the power rating of this engine and this is the torque rating of this engine above that we need to have an additional technology which will reduce the emission so so after after this standpoint, 
we we are bringing technologies in the tail pipe exhaust tail pipes uh, to bring the emission numbers down so uh, the first slide whatever we see initially like the fuel composition is bringing n number of uh, emissions uh, so reducing this n number of emissions for example in a diesel engine emission technologies are diesel oxidation catalyst particulate oxidation catalyst diesel particulate filter selective catalytic reduction lean nox trap so each technology has an a special characteristics to reduce the each emission from an engine so so the way that the principle it operates it will reduce a particular emission so in, in that way it is uh, derived or designed so i'll explain in the coming slides so in the meantime the gasoline uh, engine emission technologies like an three way catalytic converter and four way catalytic converter in scheme case and the gasoline particulate filter so so in the coming slides i'm going to explain about these technologies uh, how it works and how it operates and how it brings the emissions down so we were speaking about the after treatment technology uh, so where it is located so we know the engine it's there but when the outlet like like our uh, exhaust like uh, the outlet pipe or the manifold from starting from the manifold to the tail pipe of an vehicle like for it the image which we i am sharing it like an it's a passenger car system like uh, the in front of this the red red circled area the after treatment technologies are applied over there to utilize effective utilization of the heat that is the exhaust gas carrying and reduces the emission to the required number so for gasoline after treatment it's a three way catalytic converter it's a generic technology we are using all around and it is categorized based upon the location like uh, the technology placement determines its name like under body converter close couple converter and manifold converter so a close couple converter is close to the exhaust manifold which will have an impact of 900 to 1000 degree centigrade and the tow body is the brake pedal or transmission and under body is the floor board like uh, right down the vehicle like uh, it, the temperature variant are different like based upon this temperature conditions uh, the material selection and other design parameters are decided but apart from this the conversion is same like uh, as the name implies three way catalytic converter uh, the three major uh, pollutants or the um, Uh, regulation limits for a gasoline engine is HCCO and NOx. So uh, the HCCO and NOx is converted to uh, non-harmful emissions or the unregulated emissions into H2O, CO2, and N2. Uh, this is how it operates. So we can see in the next slides how it is uh, having a chemical reaction or how it is utilizing it. a catalytic converter is a vehicle emission control device that converts toxic pollutant in exhaust gas to less toxic pollutants a three way catalyst can eliminate co hc nox by over 99 percentage that 99 percentage is determined by the condition so as i said the effective utilization can be done at a certain bandwidth or operate operation so at that particular bandwidth it can provide an efficiency of 99 percentage and the first widespread introduction of catalytic converter was in the year 1975 in united states so they are the leaders of the emission control technology they are going ahead on it and uh, we are following the grown nations so there are uh, there are mu much chemicals or catalyst coated inside the this uh, this component to meet the emission like some kind of as we are speaking about coh hc nox or some chemistry is working into it so the wash coat material and the catalyst material which are coated inside the component to convert this uh, harm 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 emissions to harmless emissions so the temperature and conversion we, if, if you remember uh, the same kind of image we were showing in the initial engine operation like the air fuel ratio at a particular point there is an uh, better uh, better performance like the same wise 
the better catalytic uh, conversion or the emission conversion is happening at a particular temperature so that's what all the three emissions are look into it and it can be uh, reduced further so this is what the uh, uh, real chemistry is going on like oxidation reaction as the catalyst we have coated as platinum palladium and rhodium for this like hc plus o2 goes to like co2 and uh, and co plus of uh, o2 gives co2 so the, this chemistry is happening like if you see clearly like the regu the regulated emission hc co or nox is converting into the other variables so this is how this uh, reduction and oxidation happens to bring the uh, emissions down some challenges uh, are like uh, we are putting the catalysts inside like catalysts like platinum palladium rhodium coated material inside the exhaust stream so the it, it is need to be enough uh, enough sufficient to withstand the temperature and enough it's uh, enough uh, uh, pressure drop should be there like uh, for example there are certain allowable pressure drop limit for designing a system so that should not be exceeded so the operating environment like if it is a catalytic converter it the heat generated inside it it should not affect the other components and and the system size you cannot design a bigger system that which will reduce the emission to a lower room but the within the allowable package limit we need to design a system that can reduce the emission so that's how the uh, gasoline after treatment works so coming to a diesel after treatment uh, the diesel oxidation catalyst diesel particulate filter lean nox trap and selective catalytic reduction so in generic if you see doc as the name implies it's oxidation catalyst so it's only do the oxidation or activity not the reduction activity and the dtf particulate filter for diesel so it's a filter for filtering the particulate matter and the lean nox trap as the name implies it's a trap it's a trap for the nox at the lean operating condition and if you see the scr is a selective catalytic reduction that the name uh, is deriving that it's a special technology to bring the uh, nox emissions from an engine uh, bring the reduction of nox emission from an engine so that's called a selective catalytic reduction so as the same definition of a diesel oxidation catalyst a diesel oxidation catalyst is a flow through which consists of canister like uh, it's some kind of technical term like uh, it is an ceramic component inside it so it will be of honeycomb structure so it will be coated with platinum palladium some precious material so that happens to create the uh, oxidation activity inside so that that brings the emissions down like benefits are uh, particulate matter has also reduced to a certain extent and other emissions are reduced like it only not only works on the oxidation of uh, um, hydrocarbon and co but also on the other parameter a uh, little bit so this is how like uh, the doc it's mentioned uh, is an oxidation catalyst the emissions are co hc and so soluble organic fraction are coming into picture and this is how as i said the uh, honeycomb structure will be the inside the honeycomb structure the yellow or the uh, wash coat and catalyst that are coated inside this uh, chemicals come into action with this uh, uh, pollutants to form an uh, unpolluted gases like co2 and h2 this so it's like a black box and this can only happen at the uh, temperature conditions like certain temperature limits are there so based on that operating condition only this conversion can happen so uh, for an oxidation catalyst as i said the particulate matter to a certain extent it can reduce like uh, if you see in soot particulates of ash and the uh, sulfate and water and the soluble organic fraction so this 30 percentage this diesel oxidation catalyst is getting reduced so so for example if you say an particulate matter reduction can be done with a diesel oxidation catalyst to a certain extent 30 percentage so that's what explained here then comes the diesel particulate filter 
again it's like an air filter we are using in the inlet of an engine the inlet air is clean here the exhaust air is clean only thing is if you see here the hcco nox pm and sox all the emissions are coming out when you see here it's an uh, pm free uh, gas like the walls the it's it's if you see clearly the exhaust gas will not pass through the straight away straight flow through it will flow through the walls it are it are pushed to to flow through the walls and get filtered the uh, the uh, pm inside the exhaust gas so that's what the how, that's how the filter works and there are various materials like it's uh, too technical like cordy right silicon carbide ceramic and uh, metal fiber flow like various uh, materials are used for the uh, dpf manufacturing so uh, like uh, this is an uh, clear view of the filtration like uh, this this is a wall that the exhaust gas flow through and this particulate matter got filtered so if you see a nanometer size pore can filter micrometer size particle that mean to say is a bigger particle with a smaller holes it will get restricted inside the filter so uh, here is the the accumulated uh, suit inside the flow like if the channel will be there like this uh, for example if it's something around 2 to 3 mm uh, width then after filtration it got into like this it's the suit will get loaded this is how it uh, it it, it it gives or it supports to the exhaust after treatment technology so the other point is like when we are uh, making the suit filled on this diesel particulate filter uh, in olden days uh, we used to uh, scrap the diesel particulate filter when it exceeds the uh, pressure limit or it, when it is got filled up uh, we need to remove this uh, component and we need to throw it out but now due to the technology development we are doing an regeneration process like we are heating the brake to remove the uh, suit accumulated inside like for example the exhaust gas temperature is brought into uh, a certain limit uh, and it is getting burned and in some other case it is uh, coated with some material to bring the temperature higher Uh, so that's how the filter is getting clean it's not uh, taking the filter out and it's uh, that's how the diesel particulate filter uh, regeneration happens so as as the regeneration there are passive and active so passive is nothing but it it will remain stable and the the self self controlled or the uh, the coated catalyst coating will promote the temperature to bring the uh, regeneration into picture when it's normal active normal condition but when it is an active you need to have an external source or an external uh, uh, temperature provider to heat the uh, loaded suit uh, and and release the uh, suit as ashes out so that's like uh, the active regeneration techniques or burner and throttling and fuel additives and catalytic uh, regeneration and other things so here is a combination of doc and dpf the pumps first comes the diesel oxidation catalyst and this then comes the diesel particulate filter in this kind of uh, systems the combination is utilized like the uh, diesel will have uh, D doc will have the nox that is the uh, nox coming out since it is an uh, oxidation catalyst the exhaust uh, from an engine is coming out hc and co it will oxidize into h2 and co2 and this nox coming out from an engine will come as it is and that will be utilized for the uh, dpf uh, to oxidize the suit inside it so that is some comment of chemistry inside it to release the loaded suit then the lean nox trap so lean nox trap is one of the technology for reducing the nox it's trapping it as in the initial presentation we have seen that diesel is an lean burn engine so in the lean lean burn condition uh, high amount of nox is generated this nox are trapped using this technology and it will be released in the rich mode like 
for if you see this is a lean nox trap catalyst which will store the nox coming out at a higher uh, for an uh, lean mode condition and then the engine when the engine is operating at uh, rich mode or the ecu is controlled to operate the engine at a rich mode and it is get released into uh, n2 the nox stored inside will be uh, released as n2 with the use of uh, catalyst reaction so the the stoichiometric is decided by it. like we were speaking about the lean burn and rich burn the air fuel mixture ratio uh, is like uh, it, it it decides like if it is less than one it's a rich mixture where where it will it will be generated to um, uh, release the stored nox inside and in the case of lean mixture uh, if it is uh, it is it will be higher than one that the higher oxygen content will be there so this is an image view of uh, how it talks like uh, the nox is captured during normal lean air fuel ratio condition and nox is regenerated during uh, rich air fuel condition so it, it will be trapped first in the first stage and in the second stage it will do the rich mode condition it will be released so the the the, the reaction behind that is, is shown to you know like like the barium oxide uh, will form into barium nitrate catching the nox then the hydrocarbon come into picture and it will react to form and uh, releases the uh, no2 and then is a selective catalytic reduction uh, the scr name implies so this is for efficient control of nox reduction scr system were introduced to stationary power plants during 1970 in japan and uh, in this technology we are injecting urea inside the system and uh, that is called the diesel exhaust fluid and all other things are same like an other uh, catalytic reactions so the various components are uh, injecting urea diesel exhaust fluid and the dosing system and the sensors for controlling all its and the the uh, reacting uh, substrate and other other categories are like the doc systems like you can see in the next slide like this is the full setup of an scr system so this is the exhaust pipe with the uh, technology attached here with the an uh, dosing module which will control the uh, amount of uh, urea available in a tank with the with the diagnostics of the sensors in the system this sensors give the input to the uh, module so this is the amount of nox coming out it and so this, this is the amount that need to be injected so based upon this this line heated line will uh, provide the uh, urea Uh, that into the exhaust stream so since ammonium storage is quite difficult we are uh, loading urea in the tank and we are injecting it to form ammonia and then the reaction goes on like various uh, thermolysis hydrolysis process or happens and this is how like in front of the substrate like in front of the system the ammonia will react with the nox to form n2 and h2 so this is the final reaction that happens to bringing this uh, ammonia we are uh, making this urea to happen some kind of uh, uh, mixing with the exhaust gas uh, to convert into ammonia so if this process is not happening properly the various uh, drawbacks can happen like in other cases like if you see from the beginning like for an three way catalytic converter or an diesel oxidation catalyst or dpf for lnt uh, there is no kind of external uh, inputs to an uh, exhaust system like only the resource coming from an uh, engine is going to be uh, acted and the uh, emissions are reduced but here we are injecting particular uh, solution or the liquid into the exhaust gas if any unfavorable condition happens it can form the crystallization in the exhaust path and even it can block it and also other factors like incomplete decomposition of urea in the exhaust gas after injection results in urea crystallization in the exhaust system uh, so this this need to be carefully taken care 
like the proper monitoring of the system and the proper utilization of the system or or uh, uh, proper maintenance like uh, this all and critical factor for the upcoming uh, diesel or the bs6 uh, regulated system so various technologies are there there we need to we cannot use it like an uh, older uh, mechanical engines uh, it all sensor control it need to be precisely taken care and all the response or the like uh, uh, like human being each and every response from the dashboard need to be taken care and it need to be uh, given proper service at the at the respective interval time to have an uh, effective utilization of automotive vehicles so this how the technology and uh, in parallel not only in an exhaust and ice engine the other way the uh, technologies are growing like alternate fuel engines and the hydrogen uh, internal combustion engine in fuel cells and the advanced gas engineering the the other way it's it's, it's developing uh, to reduce the uh, the technology impact on the environment so if it goes in that way then the co2 contribution will be lower like conventionally the fuel economic technology we are here uh, and if it goes down by the hybrid and the electric and renewable energy so this can be reduced so that an uh, pollution controlled environment can be given to the uh, people yeah thank you thank you sir thank you very much sir it was a knowledge provoking session gaining more from the emission control technologies in automotive definitely your talk will help our students to develop their project sir we have uh, some questions in the chat box yeah uh, yes how we will know when to change the catalytic converter uh, in general uh, the uh, still date systems a catalytic converter are developed to the beat and life of an system like if you normally say uh, engine every engines are uh, developed for the beat and life like it's 8 8000 hours it's a beat and life of an engine like the when the 10 percentage of an engine components get uh, damaged or uh, degrades so till that the uh, the system will operate only thing is if the conditions are maintained properly this is the case of an uh, catalytic converter but in the case of upcoming uh, bs6 systems like a diesel particulate filters and other systems you need to have an periodic uh, service like uh, the ash cleaning is a separate process that need to be maintained so uh, so compared to an existing technology the upcoming uh, things or upcoming technologies for the bs6 that need to be an uh, periodic cleaning like uh, the particulate filter especially that need a uh, periodic cleaning based upon the astro okay thank you sir there is one more question also sir uh, what is the role of electronics in emission control system uh, till that uh, electronics like if you take till bs4 there are not much sensors like if you take an a diesel uh, exhaust system only an oxygen sensor was there but in today's uh, scenario the complete exhaust system is driven by an electronic control like as you seen in the last slide of an hcr technology uh, for an a particular technology itself there are n number of sensors like nox sensor temperature sensor ammonia sensor and all are controlled by an uh, dosing module this dosing module is directly integrated with an ecu and all all the again for each technology like dpf the regeneration is controlled by an ecu and lnt it's controlled by an ecu the, all the for example nowadays every for bs6 every system is coming with a minimum of 3 to 4 sensor so electronic is going to play a major role okay thank you sir sir uh, one more question is there sir uh, what are the particulates used in four way catalytic converter Uh, the, uh, repeat your question. What are the particulates used in four-way catalytic converter? So, as the name is there, it's a four-way catalytic converter. Like uh, basically, uh, HC, CO, NOx, and PM are the four emissions. So, the name four-way catalytic is these four emissions are reduced. So, oxidation, the HC, CO. and the pm all three need to be oxidized like 
H2O, CO2 and uh, PM2 reduce soluble organic fraction. And the NOx, NOx need to be reduced. So for that, we need uh, rhodium. So platinum, palladium and rhodium are the catalyst uh, particles that is coated inside. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, so now I request Dr. S. Sivagami, Madam, Department of Mechanical Engineering, to deliver the vote of thanks. To all, it is my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this moment. I would like to extend a special thanks to our honorable guest, Mr. Ashok Kumar, Deputy Manager, Tata Motor Industries Limited, for making an excellent presentation and making this webinar a very interesting. Sir, thank you so much. I also wish to express my gratitude to our chairman, vice chairman, principal, and director for providing encouragement and continuous support. I am happy to share my time to my HOD and convener to organize this webinar. As no program can become successful with a single person, so I extend my big thanks to our staff members, students, and participants. Thank you all for making this event successful. Your contribution. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. HOD, sir. A nice presentation, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Ma'am, should we end up?